Okay. Let's see what else I got. We got triggers, underlying motives, and we got inconsistencies. Uh, let's put this one here. We have triggers, underlying motive, and inconsistencies. Um, this person is going to say something, okay? That what they're saying, it doesn't make sense. Okay, it's like they say one thing this day, one thing that day, and put the pie down. Mm -hmm. Put that pie down. Somebody eating pie, or uh, maybe you have a taste for some pie. Mm -hmm. You know you don't need to be eating that damn pie. Put it down. I say, what kind of pie? I don't care if it's a Twinkie. Put it down. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm bringing something maybe maybe like a uh, a lemon meringue pie. Um, I see blueberry pie. I see. Can pie. Um, mm, I know it tastes good. I'll put it down. Put the pie down, Virgo. We have some underlying motives here. They're triggering you because you you're finally able to see through this person's inconsistencies through what they're saying. It doesn't make sense. You said this last week, okay? Or you said that last week. What you're saying is um is what you're saying doesn't make sense because you told me something different last week, okay? And I have her uh, inevitable. It's in inevitable that you are going to um, just leave this person. You need to contact. Well, maybe you, you're contacting this person because you haven't talked to this person or you refuse to talk to this person because every time you talk to them, it's something else. It's something something else changes. Okay. Maybe you, they they had something that they were supposed to do for you and, and that changed, that changed, you know. But every time you turn around, something goes on. You got an excuse for every damn thing. It's inevitable, but you're going to reach out to this person. Not that you're going to reach out to this person, but the one thing that they said and it clicked like, oh, shit, you said something different last time. Uh-uh, we're going to set this straight. You're going to talk to them about their inconsistencies. This person is overstepping some boundaries. You don't like to be put on hold. You don't like people to lie to you. And then when you catch them in a lie, they still try to fake the funk like they ain't do shit wrong. Mm-mm, Virgo finna dig in that ass. I tell you. Okay. I hear Virgo out here digging that ASS and pull all the hairs out. Yank all the hairs out. They won't, they won't fuck with you again. I guarantee you that. Bottom of the deck. Closure. <laughs> See? Closure. So let this person know you're you're not in that shit. You're not you're not gonna let them come over and lie to you. Uh uh, it's not gonna happen. You, you found the wrong one here. Ain't gonna happen. Okay. We have triggers, underlying motives, inconsistencies. You need to reach out. Maybe it's something that they said they were gonna do. I'm gonna be over there today to cut the grass. You just said that three or four times. My my, I can you know drop my keys in the grass and can't even find them. It's time for you to cut my fucking grass, okay? So maybe they reached out and said they were text you last night and said I'll be there tomorrow at ten a.m. ten o'clock and came and gone. Your grass still ain't cut. What what is the excuse now? So they didn't overstep your boundaries. They too they are too inconsistent. Find somebody else to cut that motherfucking yard, okay? Find somebody else to mow that lawn too, Virgo. Mm, you know what you know what that means. Find somebody else to mow that lawn. Get the drift. Uh, where you have fun, romance, and create things you are proud of in your head, in your mind. This is spirit calling out to you to to do what you have been gifted to do. Draw your pictures, paint, uh, write poetry, work on their book, write, uh, do something about maybe be making jewelry, candles, anything that's going to be creative for you where you can make more money from successfully successfully residual income all right so i feel like there was something that you needed to do but or even you know something around your house maybe the contracted to do something some work at your house and you set up a day and time you maybe took off work cancel a couple of appointments and this bastard didn't show up and you pissed how many times are you going to change this um change this this um agreement that we have two Somebody might be have, need, need, to, need to have a tooth pulled or something or having some issues with your teeth. Maybe have a cavity and need a crown or a root canal. We 
we have here your fantasies, yearnings, longings, and potential for illusion. You can you can take your mind so far, uh, however far you want it to. There are so many opportunities. There are so many dreams. There are so many visions of your life and the way you want it to go inside your head. But you need you need to put forth that effort to make it happen. And you stop being inconsistent. You know that there's something that you want to do. And, and you've always wanted to do it, but what is the underlying motive? What's holding you back? Okay. I feel it's inevitable that you are going to make things change in your life. You are going, are going to listen to those messages inside your head. Uh, you see these pictures, these words, uh, whatever you want to write in a book or what instrument you, you're good at playing, what art, craft, uh, making jewelry. Like I said, there's something out there for you to do. All right. Um, but you're holding on. You're not letting go. You're not releasing it. All right. And so I feel like, you know, if you've been wanting to do something with, with a spiritual, uh, spiritual, yeah, but with a gift that you have, a creative gift, a creative spark that you have, you know, you've had a lot of people to overstep their bounds and told you you weren't going to be able to do that or you wouldn't be successful at it. Okay. Um, and it's like they made you believe what they said about your, in, about your incapability of doing something. Tell those people to stay out your damn face and stay out of your business. Okay. T stay out of my damn face. You don't know nothing about me. Mind your own motherfucking business. I know what the hell I'm doing. If you don't like it, you can go out there and kiss the street. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go out of there outside and get hit by motherfucking dirt. Stay out of my life. Stay out of my mind. You don't know. You don't know. S. You don't do shit about me. I gotta do what the hell I want to do. This is my life. If you don't like it, you know what you can do. Your potential for a sudden change, enlightenment, and awakening. This is you awakening to things different. And you know, I saw this quite I think about you talking to people, telling them to mind their own business. Tell them. <laughs> I don't want to say that. Okay. Tell them to, uh, if they so, if they want to get jiggy with it. Okay. If they want to, if they want to learn how to be electrified, tell them to give them your charger. Okay. <laughs> the, the part of your charger is you plug in your phone, Virgo. Tell them you got a gift for them. Tell them, tell them to take that and put it in their mouth. Tell them to suck on it. <laughs> and tell them to suck on it for five minutes, okay? And then they won't bother you no more. No more, Virgo. I'm sorry. <laughs> so tell them, tell them, suck on it for five minutes. I bet you won't say shit to me no more. Don't come, on, come over here messing with me. Okay, you got the right one here, okay? Uh, your potential for sudden change, enlightenment, and awakening. So definitely, I feel like you are awakening to so many things. It's like a, a light bulb has finally went off on your head, in your head, and now you're going to finally realize what you're, what you're here to do. And that what you're here to do is going to bring in that more money, that more income, more potential. But it's also going to bring you life satisfaction and peace because you're doing something you love. It's like not the regular nine to five, not the job that you go to every day, okay? Full-time, part-time, or whatever. But this is something that you truly endure, something that you truly endure and something that you love, all right? And it's just gonna hit you like a ton of bricks. It's time. You'll know when your time is right. Um, uh, Miss Shelley, the lady who passed away, they had her uh, a get together for her last Sunday night. And I, I don't like to read in front of people, which is just something I don't like crowds. So that's why you rarely never see my face. But um, I had one of my um, friends read the poem and my boss's wife said that, uh, Nikki, you wrote that. I said, yeah, she said you should be getting a book together. That was that was a beautiful poem. I couldn't I can't believe you wrote that. I People always say, yeah, I write that. That's me. OK. Um, and she said, well, you should consider writing a book. I said, I actually have them in a book. But um, I'm still working on it, so I haven't been able to finish. I need to really sit down and do it the way I want to do it. So I am definitely working on a poetry book, okay? But some, uh, And at my, my niece's funeral, she committed suicide last year. I had my um, nephew, my nephew's wife, I should say my niece-in-law, whatever. She, uh, the poem was called Lost Butterfly. And she said... Uh, Nikki, I, I looked that poem up um, up at work because I told I told my husband she didn't write that. Yes, I did write that. You don't think I could write that because I'm big and black? Yes, I can. Back the fuck up. I know what my capabilities are. I know how to put sentences and words together. So, whatever. People don't think that you can do something, but when you do it, they still don't believe it. Okay? They still go looking to make sure you didn't steal this or you didn't steal that idea from somebody else. Don't make people don't make people dim your shine because they don't understand you. Fuck them. Mm -hmm. Your your potential 
to learn something and hold on this damn okay your potential to learn something in your local neighborhood so learn something about your neighborhood learn the uh value or historic value about your neighborhood or even some of your your uh, neighbors maybe they've been there for a long long time so i feel like there's something to learn there's something to maybe take the opportunity to get to know neighbors especially if they're new to your neighborhood i had a, a family a wife his his um, a, a husband wife and their two kids and i was headed out to work one morning it was about 7 40 that's normally the time i leave and i he was coming out he was at his car and i walked up i said how you doing he said hey so he walked toward me first he initiated contact so i shook his hand and i told him my name he said i have a wife here and um my daughter and son and glad i said welcome to the neighborhood he said glad to meet you and and he told him he is his wife was at work or something like that and i said well tell i said hi and you know but so it's nice to get to know your neighbors some people really don't want to be bothered they just come and go i've been here about four years so basically that's all i do i come and go i wave my hand and speak at certain neighbors and i just leave it at that it's not that i'm anti-social that's just who i am you know so uh we don't have any issues in the neighborhood there's no disrespect or anything like that it's just a nice peaceful neighborhood you know but getting to know your neighbors all right the, this area of your life is about long-term significant partners, romantic business, or family. And you know what? Releasing people. If people don't believe in your capabilities or they are incapable of understanding who you are, you don't need them in your life. Okay? You need them to walk away. I just feel like there's a lot of opportunities coming for you. I do see you meeting somebody, somebody coming into your life, um, a significant other. Okay? And not an incon inconsistent person not an insignificant person but a significant person is coming in your life because you're about to close off some things in your life that you don't have the time for i think you know the last time i saw my nephew and his wife was at my niece's funeral and that's the last time i saw her okay you're not gonna question me i've been writing all my life and that's something you're never going to be able to change it's not my fault that you felt that that poem was so good that me i couldn't have written it yes i guess the fuck i did write that poem don't get me started okay so i got my poem that i wrote for my niece um when she passed away and i did read this poem before uh after my um not my niece's funeral i think that same day or the next day i wrote a poem for my other niece and as big as this deck is because the poem is called lost butterfly and as big as this deck is here that i use and i just saw butterfly oh my gosh <laughs> um I, as big as this this i almost said something else as big as this deck okay is d e c k <laughs> um the, the two cards that fell out was butterfly and auntie okay so i feel my niece was telling me through my my nieces my other nieces reading that thank you for the poem because it was auntie and butterfly came out so that i felt that that was oh excuse me that was so strange but but i mean strange in a beautiful way so this poem is, and she told me she thought i got this offline bitch please lost butterfly i Hold on, I, I got my contacts on and, and like glasses and I still can't see. So y'all gotta bear with me. I didn't know what else to do. The light inside me started to diminish. I couldn't just talk about it. I felt that no one could or would understand me. Don't think that this is all your fault. You're not to blame. This was all my doing. I wanted to be, I needed to be closer to the king because he could see the light in me that I didn't know was there all along. I couldn't fly the way I wanted to. I couldn't see the light at the end of the t of, at the end of the tunnel. I felt that I was drowning in the shallow end of life's enormous whirlpool. I felt like I was wrapped in a cocoon, not able to move, not able to shine, not able to show how beautiful I was. I was blinded by the this doubt inside that made me believe that I was void. But now I am flying high, ascending higher than I ever thought I could. I got my I got my butterfly wings and they are gorgeous. I've started my migration from one life to the next. Don't stand in the rain and hide your tears. Don't spend your time mourning me. Celebrate the greatness that has come to me and never forget I love you forever. When you see a butterfly fluttering by, that will be me leaving my butterfly kisses in the wind. When you feel the same, when you feel that same breeze across your face, that is confirmation for me that your lost butterfly has found her way home. And it's dedicated to my niece, K. 
Kanisha. She committed suicide and she was only 23 years old. So, um, yeah. And I can't believe somebody put fixed their mouth to say they thought that I got that poem off, off, uh, off the internet. You know what? People are not going to want to see the good in you, no matter who they are and what you do. So, you know, you just get, you got to ignore them. You got to move on with your life because you're going to have a lot of people in your life who are not good for your energy. They don't want to see you excel in nothing in your life. And they don't want to see you do anything better than they do. Okay. Let's get a final call for you. Actually, I'm going to, now that I'm thinking about it, because I feel my niece's energy, I'm going to go over to the other channel and do a reading for past on loved ones who committed suicide. I'll put that link uh, on this, on this page here on the community section. If you all don't see that come up, but please join that other channel too. We got to know your power. Don't let anybody take away your power. Okay. Uh, and, and the way you look at things, don't challenge yourself because people look at you so different, you know, that because they don't think that you're capable of doing that because they, they see the way you look or the way you carry yourself. You know, you got to You got to Don't let people talk you down. You did it. You do it. You did it. You know, you got it. And don't let them take it away from you. You know, they need to change the way they see you and see your capabilities, not the other way around. Know your power and keep it. Okay. Um, there could be somebody here who I said something earlier about teeth. Maybe you're having some issues with your tooth, maybe a um, abscess or something like that. Something you're gonna have some toothache pain or something with your jaw, um, lock jaw or something. Or uh, I feel some sort of infection. Somebody's gonna get some sort of infection. You know, just make sure you take care of yourself. Go to the dentist. Don't wait around. Okay. Okay, Virgo. And listen, you're gonna always be a horse of a different color. If they don't like it. Like I said earlier, tell them to suck on the end of a of a phone charge <laughs> of a phone charger burger. All right, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later.